today in Rich in Relationship, we're going to talk about the disconnect between the emotions we present and what we're really feeling and how that might mess up intimacy in our marriage. When people express their emotions appropriately and release them, they have no need to hurt others. Roommates don't show their true selves to each other. They show their business face to each other. Welcome to another episode of Rich in Relationship, and I'm your host, Rich Heller, and I'm titling this episode, Can You See the Real Me? And it kind of reminds me of a Pete Townsend song. It goes, can you see the real me, doctor, doctor, can you see the real me? Right? It's because in our relationship, in our marriage, that's really what intimacy is about, seeing the real me. And the problem is that we get locked in these patterns of presenting feelings that we're not really having. In fact, we're encouraged to do it. We're told that if you're having a bad day, you should start the day over. We're told that if you're at work, nobody wants to know about your personal life. People say, hey, how you doing? Maybe somebody's just died. You say, oh, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. But on the inside, we are crying. And the problem is that as we do that more and more, we start to take that crap home. How was your day? Oh, it was good. How was yours? Fine. And individually, you start leading parallel lives. You're like freaking roommates. Roommates don't show their true selves to each other. They show their business face to each other. Well, that's not what you signed up for, is it? You didn't sign up to be like that, did you? And yet somehow, habitually, you, we, many of us have confused presenting a way of being with how we are actually feeling. Well, this episode is all about that. It's about social conditioning. It's about, you know what, when we're kids and we come home from school and we're upset about something, our parents either explore it with us or they shut us down. They give us truisms like when the going gets tough, the tough get going. If you fell off your horse, you got to get back on it. If we have really caring and empathetic parents, they might sit down and say, really, what happened? What's going on? But I'm going to tell you that there are many parents who tell you when you come back and you've been bullied, they say, you don't come back and take this baseball bat and don't come into this house until you have straightened that situation out. Instead of sitting there and processing your feelings and talking it through with you, there, there's like the answer to being bullied is to become the bully. Don't worry about those feelings of hurt. Don't worry about those feelings of sadness. Don't worry about that. Go out and kick some ass and then you'll feel better. And I'm not saying that's wrong. There are times when that's useful. But what I'm saying is we become socially conditioned to stop paying attention to our feelings and override them with action. We start becoming socially conditioned from the time that we're children to growing up to going to school, to going to college, if you went to college or not, or to going to work, if you're working or not, all of those situations condition us. Because the truth is, nobody wants to hear our sadness. Nobody wants to hear our hurt. Nobody wants to hear about our guilt, our shame. Nobody wants to hear about our fears, unless they're getting paid for it, or they actually signed up for it. And when two people fall in love and get married, I submit to you that what you actually signed up for is someone you can vent and air that stuff out with. But like so many marriages, you've probably slipped into a place where it no longer feels safe to do that. And you don't see the real me anymore. They don't see you and you don't really see them. And so you come home and you do your best. So you might say, you know what, it's a tough day, but I'll be okay. That might be, that's a little better than, oh, everything was fine. There's also a fear of vulnerability. Sometimes we show those feelings and we get squashed. And when that happens consistently, when we have a consistent experience of vulnerability being squashed, we stop wanting to be vulnerable. And so when conflict comes up, what we'll do, rather than be vulnerable in the conflict, is we'll act calm. We'll, our, our emotional availability becomes no high, no low, just very logical. Or maybe we get really angry because anger feels more empowering than some of those other feelings. Or maybe we just run away and don't have it. Or maybe we're avoiding conflict. These are all signs 
that you're having trouble being yourself with each other. These are all signs that there might be some fear of vulnerability. These are all signs that there are some conditioned behaviors that are helping you to have a less than intimate relationship. Sometimes we have expectations. Sometimes we believe that there's certain roles and there are emotional expectations that come with it. Sometimes we think that taking the lead in the family means that we always have to be strong. We can't show our feelings. Sometimes we think that we can't show our feelings because we're taking care of our kids. When sometimes our kids, but you know what? Here's the joke of all this, all right? The joke of all this is that on some level, we all know how one another is feeling. On some level, if we sat down and took the time to sit in a quiet room together with no distractions, we would start to see and feel what the other person is feeling. But what's happened is we've layered over our connection to other people with conditioning, with fear, with expectation. And what this creates over time is we start giving our children mixed messages. The message we give our children is, you know what, I'm feeling hurt and sad, but I'm going to act happy. And they feel that. They don't understand it intellectually, but they feel it. They're connected to you emotionally. They feel the disconnect. Or we go and we talk to people and we're putting on this happy face, but we're feeling something else. They sense the disconnect, unconsciously at least. Consciously, they might be going along with us and playing the game, but unconsciously, they start to distrust because anytime we're acting an emotion that we're not having in that moment, we're inauthentic. And that inauthenticity breeds distrust. And distrust destroys intimacy. It destroys connection over time. Distrust is the killer of intimate marriages. And so we've all been trained, taught, conditioned to be inauthentic. And where marriage is a covenant, it's a partnership in rediscovering our true selves. Marriage is a partnership. It's a covenant in helping each other be the best people that we can be. And being the best people that we can be means our authentic true selves, that our exterior is in harmony with our interior. That doesn't mean that we go to work and someone dies and we're crying all the time, but it might mean that we go to work and we're just doing our job and people say, are you okay? And you say, no, not really, but I'm doing my job today. Oh, do you want to talk about it? No, this isn't really the time to talk about it. You know, if you're maybe after work, but right now I really need to just focus on doing what I've contracted to do. Being authentic doesn't mean that we have to slip into victimization endlessly. It means that we can have the feelings and get things done. We can be present for ourselves and we can be present for others. It means we can get off of the societal media-driven image that we all have to be mad, successful, happy, joyful, exuberant people all the time. Vacationing in Cancun with the nicest cars and the nicest clothes. And we can allow ourselves to experience some sadness, to experience some grief, to experience some hurt. We can allow ourselves to talk about the things we're ashamed about with the people we trust, not on social media, unless we've really done some healing. And we feel safe doing it. The consequences of this disconnect is we experience internal conflict, all right? We're out of sync with ourselves. We're out of harmony with ourselves. We can, it can lead to burnout, anxiety. We can get angry with ourselves when we're inauthentic. We get angry with ourselves. It certainly leads to relationship tension. Either both of you are having this experience and pretending like everything's okay when it's not, but you both know it isn't. Eventually, that's going to explode. That tension is always present. You're always dancing around it. And when you do that for a long period of time, and then you finally let them know, when the emotion builds up to the point where you can't keep it down anymore, and you finally let it out, they're totally blindsided because you've had this unconscious agreement 
that you just weren't going to let that stuff out in the relationship. And then you do. And they're just like, wait, what? What's going on? And you say, how did you not see it? I've been feeling this way all the time. And they go, yeah, I had an idea, but I didn't know it was like this. The problem with this with this state is it's a, a constant emotional suppression and compartmentalization. And if we're not expressing it, if we don't find ways to express it, if we don't find ways to experience and express it, we can become mentally ill, quote unquote. Mentally ill, it means that we are having an emotional experience that causes us to not function in society. Mental, you got to get the mental illness. Mental illness is societally defined. And the current definition of mental illness is anything that keeps us from functioning and being productive members of society, like depression is a mental illness. Why? Because people who are depressed have trouble getting out of bed. People who are depressed have trouble getting things done. They're so, they're so uh, buttoned down and emotionally buttoned down, they just have trouble functioning. Or alcoholism is a mental illness for obvious reasons. People who are alcoholic have a hard time functioning. But really what a mental illness is, is it means there's an emotional state that you have not been managing. Well, then there's mental illnesses like schizophrenia, which haven't, they have, people haven't really figured out what the root of that is, or what it is even, or why it fits. But most of the mental illnesses that you and I are going to experience, schizophrenia is something that occurs when you're 17 usually, most of the mental illnesses that you and I might experience are the result of poorly expressed or inadequately expressed emotion. And not only can we bring on mental illness, which is just a label, a label for we've become, we've reached a level of dysfunctionality where people notice that there's, we're not, we're not taking care of ourselves and taking care of business and taking care of people around us. But we start teaching our children this behavior. In fact, they will take it and perfect it. All right. And so if you can't see how this is hurting you, see how this is hurting them. I can't tell you how many clients I've had come to me who were victims of abuse and then they had children. And when they saw how the person who was abusing them abused their children, then they took action because they couldn't take action for themselves. But when they saw an innocent, how an innocent was being abused, then they took action. So get that your level of functionality in your, with yourself, in your self-care, your level of functionality in your relationship with your partner, your level of functionality with your kids, with your community, at work, it all has to do with how you're managing these emotions, how you're either having them at appropriate times and appropriate places or not. You know, we uh, I'll just throw in another example, is school shootings. Do we really think that school shootings are about kids who are given guns or have exposure to weapons and are simply not managed properly? It's about the emotion that drives that, right? Like, I don't mean to sound like a member of the NRA, but when people express their emotions appropriately and release them, they have no need to hurt others. And so it's the combination of lack of emotional expression and access to weapons and models in society that encourage that behavior that lead to that. So you, I want you to get how important this is for you, your family, and your children. How do we address this? How do we, I guess first you need to recognize it. If you're walking around telling people you're fine when you're not, you've got something you need to work on here. If you are constantly compartmentalizing emotions and not ever expressing them, something's going on where, that you need to address. If you're always putting on a happy face, particularly around your partner, your family, your friends, even though you're feeling overwhelmed or unhappy inside, there's something for you to work on here. If you're putting on a happy face at work, even when you're not, I'll give you a pass there. Like we're all, that may even be necessary work. You might be at a job that requires that. You might be at a job where if you're a Debbie Downer, they're going to give you lower quality work or even think about releasing you back into the wild. But in your home environment, which is supposed to be a safe place to experience yourself and express yourself, if you don't feel like you can, there's something for you to work on. And the next step is to, it might be that you need to get some outside help. You might need to go to the a coach or a therapist and say, I can't express the real me. I need to express the real me. Help me express the real me. Or you might need to go to a spiritual leader, or maybe you need to 
talk to your partner about it. Just have a conversation about it. It might be about noticing the times when you are not expressing your emotion where you could be expressing it in a way that's safe and responsible. And just start with those simple things. Like when they say, hey, do you mind if I watch this thing while you make dinner? And you mind. You can say, yeah, I do mind, actually. I feel like I'm doing all the work here and I need a little help, please. And they might say something very defensive in response but and don't engage with them, but it's enough to say it. Just beginning to express the emotions is a start in a place where it's supposed to be safe. You want to do it in a way that feels safe. We talked like the last episode about I statements. We're talking a lot about I statements. Um, resources, there's resources for this stuff on our website, richinrelationship.com. It'll be in the notes for this for this podcast. But I statements are all about saying, uh, if going back to the original example, would be saying, I do mind, I feel hurt when you're watching your whatever, and I'm cooking dinner because I feel like I'm always doing everything around here. Make it about you. It might be that you need to have a conversation with your partner just about this. Instead of expressing the emotion, it might be saying to them, hey, you know what? Um, since we had kids, I've noticed that we've been slipping more and more into I'm fine, I'm okay, I can make it through. And I feel like I need time to talk with you about this, about what I'm really feeling, instead of saying that what I'm feeling uh, when I'm feeling something, saying I'm feeling one thing when I'm feeling another. Like I've been, honey, I've been doing this thing where I've been, I, that I do at work where I say I'm fine and I'm not. And we're supposed to be partners and I need someone I can talk to about this and see how they receive it. and Or say to them, I've noticed you have been really stressed out. Tell me more. Let's take time every, let's have date night once a week. And at date night, we're not gonna talk about anything except how we're feeling. We won't talk about our work stress unless it's driving a really negative emotion. We're not gonna try and fix the work problems. We're just gonna talk about the feelings. Let's start using date night to lay out these emotions. So just have one safe place where you do it. And the rules are, we can't invalidate each other's emotions. Start writing about your feelings in a journal, or if you don't like writing, dictating them on video, dictating them into a program that translate into words so you can see the words on the screen. Find ways to express these emotions. Find creative outlets, not just writing. It might be drawing. It might be acting. It might be music. Pray, meditate, practice mindfulness. These are all ways to start. And meditation, some people have been known to use meditation to avoid feelings. But in this case, instead of having a meditation where a feeling comes up and you thank it for sharing, really explore the feeling in your meditation. Use that meditation time to go deep into, use it as contemplative meditation. Wow, I was feeling so hurt when she was watching her show while I was cooking. What was that about? Oh yeah, you know, I remember when I was a kid, you know, that happened all the time with my mom and this reminds me of that. And what you're gonna find is a lot of the repression and a lot of the compartmentalization isn't just about being functional. It's about old emotions that are unresolved from your childhood. You're gonna find that you have limiting beliefs about this and this is the opportunity to unearth it and identify it. And as you unearth it and identify it, it's the opportunity to heal it. And as always, you can go to our website, richinrelationship.com. There are going to be resources there to help you. I want you to get that these are the first steps in a lifetime journey to be your true, authentic self and no longer feel like you have to hide. This is a lifetime journey in cultivating habits, in cultivating new ways of being so that you can release these emotions and become more and more fulfilled and happy. And we're going to explore this idea of how marriage is a covenant for being more and more open, authentic, true to yourself and happy in upcoming episodes of Rich in Relationship. So we look forward to seeing you there. As always, thank you for listening. Go to the website for more resources and have a wonderful tomorrow. Mm -hmm.